106 miles to Chicago. We got a full tank of gas, half a pack of cigarettes. It's dark, and we're wearing sunglasses. Hit it. Welcome, everyone, to the Swapcast. I'm your host, Rowan J. Coleman. With me is... James. And Callum. And the Swapcast is basically myself and my co-hosts swap uh, movie recommendations, TV recommendations, and maybe even video games or what have you, and come back here to rant and rave about our thoughts. And today, we're doing, like always, a theme, and this theme was Guilty Pleasure Movies, the movies which are kind of derided almost universally by critics or by audiences or were flops at the box office, but maybe have cult followings and people like them anyway. We'll start off with my own pick, which is the cult classic Sky Captain and the World of Tomorrow. Emergency protocol 90206, calling Sky Captain. When the shadow of evil falls across mankind. Come in, Sky Captain. A bold flying ace. This is Sky Captain. I'm on my way. One intrepid reporter. What's this all about? He's coming for me. Who's coming? And a courageous naval officer. What have you got me into this time, Joseph? Nothing you can't handle, Frankie. Are all that stand between the enemies of the future and the world of tomorrow. Captain, this is Dex. Do you read me? Come in. Hang on, Dex. I'm a little busy. Jude Law. Hold on. Gwyneth Paltrow. Can't anything ever be simple with you? And Angelina Jolie. It's a pleasure to finally meet the competition. Joe! I see it! Sky Captain and the World of Tomorrow. What were people's thoughts? Did they like it or did they dislike Sky Captain and the World of Tomorrow? So, okay, um, I really did like Sky Captain and the World of Tomorrow. Um, it was... An attempt, it was one of the first attempts at um, that kind of CGI background and you can really tell it's, there's a lot of the time where it's, it's like a PlayStation 2 cutscene. I personally did enjoy it, there's some rough areas that we'll get into, yeah. um, but overall I liked it. Yeah. It was about, my first time watching it as well. What about you, Callum? Your general thoughts before we get into the nitty gritty? I think cult following is apt because you would have to be in a cult where you just love pain to want to watch this film. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Uh, I did not enjoy this at, at all. all. Now to pull back the curtain slightly, I actually watched it just an hour or so before we started recording this, and. I wish I wasn't honest and that I just winged it and didn't watch this <laughs> film. <laughs> wow, okay. Uh, it was painful to the eyes, sometimes to the ears, and I also put down PlayStation 1 graphics, but not in the good way. So, <laughs> I personally really like it. I saw this when I was very, very young. That would and... make sense. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so for kind of context, uh, basically this is a massive throwback to 1930s comic books. It's a diesel punk, I believe is the term. So it's in an alternate 1930s world where you have these big mechanized robots and all these kinds of crazy advanced technologies out of comic mm. books and so on. And this was a very, very early attempt at the digital backlot technology, where basically everything was shot mostly against a blue screen or a green screen, and the environments and so on were constructed in a computer afterwards. Unlike, basically the only other movies outside of this that had attempted this on this scale were the Star Wars prequels. Mm. But while the Star Wars prequels had budgets of over $100 million dollars, and the backing of Industrial Light and Magic, which is one of the four most visual effects companies on the planet... Sky Captain the World of Tomorrow was done for like $40 million and was basically the director and a hundred or so artists that he knew throughout the country that all did it personally on their Apple Macs Mm -hmm. to try and attempt it. And I think knowing that, I think it's actually pretty impressive what they came up with. Can you say something? This just hurt my eyes. The the graphics. It It was very hard for me to feel like any of the characters were in any sort. There was no suspension of disbelief for me because the CGI was, like, so bad. And I believe they did the lighting CGI as well. The lighting 
A lot of the lighting was digital, yeah. Yeah, it just hurt to watch the entire time. Like, I couldn't get myself into it because if it wasn't just the graphics and me focusing on them, it was the lighting and just the kind of shade of the lighting. It just, it took me out of it. I will agree that at the start of the movie, the lighting is very murky. I think it improves when they leave uh, New York City at the beginning. But I think the reason the lighting is kind of murky and strange is because even though it's a colour film, they're trying to ape black and white cinematography. And because Mm. back in the day, black and white, you didn't have a whole lot of depth to colour in it. So they've remedied that by using shadows and light and dark areas, which is what they use to fill in the depth of certain images. But this being a colour film and being in movement, it does look very weird. I liked it yeah. for the most part. I think it grew on me as it, it as I went through the film. Yeah. Still, like trust me, Cal. There's still <laughs> points in the film that um, uh, Rowan yeah. will will say that I was like fucking hell, yeah. man. Like that looks shit. You just go. Oof. Yeah. But I think this like the the, the basic story won me through. Yeah. If we get into the movie proper, yeah, uh, we sort of given our opinions about the technical stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the movie starts off with uh, some intrigue after a big bombastic theme tune, which I, I actually love. I mean, it's totally ripping off the style of John Williams and getting into that conversation. But I I really think it's a great theme tune, a great yeah. score in general. The sound I will say this yeah. I did like the soundtrack. The soundtrack's, the soundtrack's great. Yeah. The soundtrack's great. Yeah. We meet Gwyneth Paltrow as Polly Perkins, investigative yeah. reporter, and basically she's onto this case. Where where there's these mysterious disappearing scientists and uh, she meets one of them, Walter Jennings, in a cinema and he's the last of a Unit 11 run by the mysterious Totenkopf, who's the villain uh, for the movie and uh, he gives her these strange vials uh, to look after. In general, what did you think of uh, Gwyneth Paltrow as Polly Perkins? The actress performances or the character? I... Oh God, I, I know like I'm gonna be so <laughs> negative, but like I hated the character. Yeah. Uh, whenever she spoke, nine times out of ten, it was like the most obvious thing. Like, uh, there's like a little bit later where they're surrounded by enemies, and all she says is, "They're everywhere." And there's <laughs> there's there's like another bit where they go underwater, and she literally just says, "We're underwater." And I, <laughs> so. This is when the first kind of major action set piece happens, where the New York City gets invaded by a bunch of, like, 100-foot-tall robots yep. that are, like, attacking the city and ransacking, trying to get these generators, and that's when they call in the hero of the film, Sky Captain, played by Jude Law. <laughs> oh, and only he comes in. <laughs> Sky Captain has the most anticlimactic... Like, the movie is named Sky Captain. Let's call Sky Captain. Oh, it's a bird, it's a plane, it, it's a plane, but it's got Sky Captain. And then he goes in to basically attack these, like, massive robots that have just, mm. like, flooded. I'm assuming it's New York. Yeah. 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 Uh, so he comes in and he just, like, pew, pew, like, shoots, shoots against the robots, which does nothing. And I'm mm. like, right, okay, this guy, <laughs> this guy looks like an absolute idiot. And he mm. flies away, and I'm like... Oh, is that it? Then he comes back. He does the cool little um, zip line. The, Star yeah. Wars, you know, let's yeah, trip sure. up the big yeah. AT-AT thingy, if that's the right robot thing. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, and then the rope doesn't work. <laughs> it's actually at at. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fuck up. Right. Yeah. I've seen um, people call them that, but that doesn't work in our accents. Because you can't call it an at at, can you? Cause it just sounds like Mars Attack. Though. Yeah. <laughs> 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 It's an AT-80. And yeah, he the brings third down, attempt, he? It takes him three attempts to then just shoot the foot off this robot. And mm. I'm like, that is the most anticlimactic way a hero has ever... What hero do you know has entered into a situation where he's introduced and it takes him three attempts where he has to essentially run away to beat the first bad guy in the film? But the first bad guy is like... Is a 100-foot tall robot. robot. <laughs> Did it stop one punch man? No. He's not a one punch man. Maybe he should captain. have been. Sky Captain's an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that's why it's in the world of tomorrow. It should have been Sky Captain in yesterday or something. <laughs> Sky Captain successfully brings down one robot, which for some reason means the entire legion of robots run away. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which is kind of bizarre. And uh, that's when we learned that there's been attacks all over the world of robots and what have you attacking things. And... Polly Perkins follows Sky Captain to his base, which 
has an in- he has an entire squadron of other planes, which I don't know why he didn't use in the opening sequence. Yeah. But okay. He's a glory hawk as well. There's yeah. nothing like a ball. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where we also meet uh, the other main man in his team, Giovanni Ribisi, is Dex, who's like Dex. the Q. <laughs> yeah. And uh, he's got like a fucking ray gun, which I think is awesome. Yeah. 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 I Like, I like the ray gun bit, but yeah. like throughout the film, it's just like, what is Dex's character? He... <laughs> He does gadgety stuff gadget and he man. chews gums. And he likes gums. That's it. There's like, he barely yeah. says anything. Yeah. And then, just to lead to your point here, when they're at this uh, the Sky base. Captain's yeah. base, the Sky Captain goes and has his little like shot of like milk. Milk of, of magnesia. It's yeah. Sickness. yeah. And uh, then he, yeah. he and Polly kind of talk and they just like, well, Polly and her, him have an argument because they have you know, had a, a past. That past, yeah. Past. I will say, despite my fondness for this movie, the central Joe Polly relationship is the worst part of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I it's agree. easily because Gwyneth Paltrow and Jude Law. I think Gwyneth Paltrow for this character type. I know you said she's kind of useless because she's totally the damsel in distress, nineteen thirties Lois Lane mm. kind of thing, which isn't very interesting to a modern audience. Mm. She plays to type well, like she's got the right look, she's yes. got the right attitude. She's an incredible actress, yeah. yeah. However, I think Jude Law is miscast. Aesthetic wise, I think he has the right look for the character, but what I think Jude Law is missing is the grit. Because what they really want is a kind of John Wayne cowboy esque swagger. Like they really want Harrison Ford type mm. in this role, and yeah. that's not really Jude Law. That is exactly what I put down here. I felt so much throughout this film they were trying really hard to have an Indiana Jones kind of charm mm. between Polly and Joe, but yeah. I don't know. Maybe it was miscasting because mm. Joe. Every time he speaks to Paul, he just seems fucking pissed at. <laughs> like he absolutely, yeah, yeah. they actively dislike each other yeah. the whole way through the movie. There's not even yeah. their friendly banter yeah. sounds like a f- divorced couple it's that just, are really it's not. Just happy. I quite like yeah. that though, like the kind yeah. of uh, the, the fact that they were just like pissed off with each other for a lot of the film, <laughs> yeah. and the fact that like. There are some bits where, you know, Chitla is just warming up and he's like, oh, for fuck's sake! And <laughs> yeah. you know, it like, kind of just goes back to yeah. what was status quo. Yeah. Uh, this is when they do some investigating around town and they meet one of the henchwomen, uh, who's this, I don't know what the character's name is, but she's this kind of cloak-wearing, country Assassin. plasma-shooting person. Uh, but this is when the second attack happens, which is with the big flapping planes. Mm-hmm. Which I don't really get as a design to be honest. They're planes, but their wings flap. I was like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, isn't this the worst way to design a plane? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I don't like the airplane's pretty well designed in terms of wing shape yeah. to achieve lift. I don't know why they need to flap. It's a very <laughs> odd look. Do you just want it to be unique? Yeah. yeah. The and missing that, link between normal planes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and this is when... I think this second action sequence is actually a lot stronger than the first one. Yeah. But this sequence, I think, is actually a lot better. A, because it's during the daytime. So even though there is that digital shadow thing, it's a lot brighter to look at. You can see more clearly what's actually going on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And um, also, I think there's just a better action directing. In terms of an action sequence, it's very well constructed as you're following like multiple lines of action of back at the base because they attack Sky Captain's base, and you're following Dex trying to track down the signal, but you're also following the plane and yeah. the general action around it. And there's some pretty fucking cool like explosions and, and imagery and sequences in it that are I think are a lot of fun. Yeah, it escalates, mm-hmm. and which is what a good action scene uh, action scene action should scene. action yeah I'm Sean Connery <laughs> action scene should do because it's Dex is also yeah. you know the the uh, top of uh, the roof's getting ripped off as he's figuring out yeah, which yeah. one has the transmitter yeah. that they need to um, keep. Yeah, they're like tracking down the signal to figure out where they're being controlled from. Yeah, is what they're doing. Yeah, and uh, obviously he's just like yeah. he's he's doing everything he can to stay stay yeah, alive. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. and it's it's cool. Yeah, I like yeah, because yeah. yeah. there's some fun things around New York as well where they're kind of bobbing and weaving the plane between buildings and streets and so on and there's also the cool bo- bit where he flies the plane through a scaffolding <laughs> and has to like it's almost like a video game sequence where he has to like shoot down like a bunch of crane shit in front of him uh-huh. and then use like the Batmobile yeah. uh, grappling hook thing to like swing his pr- plane around a tight corner I did like that um, the whole chase scene kind of around New York was really mm. good I, I, but it was again s- that style was so jarring like I found myself <laughs> actively being quite excited by the whole kind of fight scene with this flight with the flying like yeah. bird plane things. Bird planes, but yeah. it got again just the lighting and the CGI just 
it took me out of it. Yeah. And that was the one part where I was like, I'm getting into it. No, it's done. It's ruined again. <laughs> oh, yeah. I really like that sequence. Unfortunately, these big robots who I love the design of with their big tentacles. I do. A very yeah. Iron Giant. Yeah, uh, yeah. If he was but, turning evil. Yeah. yeah, I was thinking War of the Worlds for the tentacles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. So they roll in and unfortunately, Sky Captain's base falls and poor Dex gets captured. Now this is the weird part of the movie where... Even though, even though we've spent, like, maybe a total of five minutes with Dex at the most, yeah. everyone cares about Dex so much. They as, yeah. love Dex. As soon as Dex is stolen yeah. away from them, it's they, like, fall to their knees. Yeah. <laughs> and like, they're like, it's, 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 yeah. it's, it's so funny yeah. to, to see. You're like, who, who's this guy again? Yeah. He, he was like a side yeah. little they quirky keep, They keep doing it throughout the movie where they're like, they've got... Dex! That's guys, what caused you know, the great on. depression in that time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dex being gone. No yeah. one was buying the gum that yeah. Dex needs to and have. I, 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 lo- I like Dex as well. I think he's doing a vulnerability piece. He's doing well. He's, he's a gadget guy. But, sure. but that's all you know about him. Yeah. He's a gadget yeah. guy and he chews gum. I think that it is, is, sure. that's it. He, I like him, but the, the degree to which people care about him in this movie is kind of ridiculous and funny. They keep chucking you this dialogue being like, no... Not Dex. Yeah. You can't... Anybody you, Dex. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, it's like... <laughs> my child! Take my child! Yeah. Exactly, but yeah. they keep laying on to yeah, the others, yeah. and it gets a bit... Yeah. It does get a bit like, thick. Either they, they could have introduced him earlier, or if he had got kidnapped later. Yeah. Like, if he had stayed with them for a little bit of their journey, yeah. and then got kidnapped later, then you maybe would have got it. If they more. even threw in a few quips to give him a bit of a personality, yeah. but he just came so plain. They go <laughs> off into Nepal, and uh, during in this sequence is the first time you see the submarine uh, uh, the submarine feature of the plane which I think is really cool it was, cool. Um, it was with the the few points in the movie where the lighting yeah jar when they go underwater mm. the light completely diffuses into like a cool blue that's like that just has a nice wrap around their faces so you, you they wash away those digital shadows completely and it just looks nicer and there's like a crisper edge I feel like to everyone's faces which is a shame because Polly just ruins it with we're underwater <laughs> Joe literally says nothing in response. Because yeah. <laughs> what else can you say? Yeah. <laughs> He's just thinking about Angelina Jolie. Yeah, oh yeah, we'll get yeah, we'll get to it. But so they go to Nepal. They meet up with Omar Jalili. Uh, you may know him as the guy in the mummy who gets his brain eaten by a scarab and he runs headfirst into a wall. Yeah. He was the one shining light <laughs> in this film. Omar Jalili is great. Two minutes he was in. Omar Jalili is great. I kind of hope. I, I kind of wish he was in more of the film. I kind of so wish. I, I kind yeah. of wish he was like the third wheel. And uh, this is also one of the bit the bits of the movie which also looks really good is where they venture into the mountains to go into this mine once again when they're in the hills and they have that kind of white out snow thing. The lighting stops doing the hard digital shadows. Yeah, I got yeah. really into it. Yeah, yeah. And, and when they go into the cave, uh, right yeah, after, yeah, yeah. again, really yeah. got into in, it. In general, the effects like just look a lot better, and this and the kind of the look of the film is a lot easier on the eyes. It was very Indiana Jones where they like they look at the map. They have to travel through all this adventure yeah, stuff. Yeah, you yeah, know? I yeah. think it's kind of just going well, off of. Yeah, I've, I've, and, and I think that yeah. it's, it's taking the same source material from Indiana Jones, which is oh, also yeah, taken yeah, from that. Yeah. Kind of nineteen thirties yeah. adventure. Yeah, yeah. They have a run in with some bad Sherpas. I also really like the sequence where they um, are trapped in the room because it's it is like the end of a serial comic. Yeah. They're trapped in the room. Yeah, yeah. You know, all hope is gone. You've betrayed, like you know, Polly's betrayed Joe, yeah. and they they're having the bicker, the yeah. elaborate, <laughs> the elaborate dynamite, the fuse, the fuse down, lighting, yeah, you yeah. know, and it's kind of like, what's gonna happen yeah. next? You yeah, know? you always wanted to like freeze frame, and then be like, how do our heroes escape from this predicament? You exactly, know? Yeah, 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 yeah. You get that vibe from it there, yeah, which yeah, I really yeah. like. She Polly leaves the film uh, oh, yeah. of since yeah. she's a photographer. This becomes a running joke. She yeah. leaves the she film, leaves her camera film, yeah. so she only has two shots. She only has two. Oh, anyway, oh my we'll god, and she reminds me of five minutes. So, yeah, so this is when like, they wake up naked in bed and things, and uh, it's Joe and Polly in bed together, and then she tells him to look away as she gets changed, and that's when he rolls over, and Omid Lily's also in the bed, and he turns over and just goes, <laughs> it, Hi, Joe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. because it, it just scrolls over. Yeah. To, when, when, when Jude Law moves, that's yeah. when the camera moves, and it pans yeah. over, and it's just him kind of like, arm, <laughs> yeah. arm on head, kind yeah. of like, you know, yeah. leaning against the pillow, like, Hi, Hi Joe. Joe. <laughs> it's a great, it's a great moment. It's a really good laugh. You were yeah. incredible last night. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so they find Shangri-La, 
And yeah. then Polly has to remind you because it's been a five minute cue that she only has two shots. Yeah. Okay, you might forget, but she does remind <laughs> you every two minutes. Okay? They, they build this joke up the entire film. Yeah, this running gag that she's like. It's out. not even a row. Oh yeah. my god. I, was, I literally wanted to tear my eyes out at that every time. Because she sees all these amazing things, then every time she's like, oh, I've only got two shots. You didn't the take one of them! <laughs> god! Oh, okay, Calm. We're going to. Yeah, moving on, moving on, moving on. Yeah. So they figure out uh, <laughs> they figure out where they need to go. They need to go to uh, Totenkov's mysterious island. Then we go into my favorite bit of the movie, which is uh, they're going to this island, but they need a landing strip because they're going to run out of fuel first. So Joe calls up the British uh, Navy or Air Force, the RAF, whatever you want to call it. Frankie, yeah. Francesca, played by Angelina Jolie, who I think is easily the best part of this movie. Yeah, she's I think the, she's, her character is yeah. easily the best one. Where... She's cast spot on. She's got like the accent down pat. Mm-hmm. She looks great in the eye patch and the kind of uh, little flat cap or whatever you call that. Yeah. It's probably around this time that she was playing Lara Croft, right? Uh, I think so. I think so, yeah. Yeah, it was only like a yeah, couple yeah, of years yeah. between anyway. Yeah, yeah. Like, so she was she's, at the top of she's her good at that yeah. accent. Yeah, and she because uh, she, apparently she went, she took on the character quite seriously and like interviewed real RAF World War Two pilots about oh, their wow. attitude and, really? and stuff to like take it on board. She's easily got like the best charisma and the best look and the best. She's just easily the best character in the film, and she <laughs> kind of. Acts Gwyneth Paltrow and uh, Jude Law off the screen, as far as I'm concerned. Where yeah, whenever, I'm sort of like, yeah. where was the movie about her? <laughs> whenever, whenever, <laughs> Frankie's, <laughs> whenever Frankie's on, the focus is on her. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. She's easily the most interesting. Yeah, it's one like if you just maybe if you'd made that character a sky captain, because she literally lives in the sky. And she, like, <laughs> yeah, she, yeah, she's, yeah. She's, like, she's like literally like looks way cooler as yeah, well. Like yeah. everything about her draws your eye to her. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she like okay, I know what's happened. They only had like enough money yeah. for like her for two days. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're like fuck it, put her in some really cool eye <laughs> patch and shit. Yeah. Uh, yeah, she'll be a really memorable. But yeah, she's yeah, just yeah. she's just there for it. No, they, they, they totally did. They got they got into one blue screen room and you're like, right, you're on the airstrip. Act this scene. Now you're in a different blue screen bit. Now you're on the bridge. Act that scene. Put you in the cockpit for the next bit. And that's you done. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it probably only took her two or three days to shoot all of her scenes. But the converse of that is if she was made the star, it might have incentivized a bigger budget. And more people might have seen it. I don't know. Who knows? I will have to say, though, her character, as amazing as it was for those first couple minutes, she then looks like an idiot immediately <laughs> because Joe goes, hey, uh, we need you to help us get to uh, <laughs> Tony to Cop's space. The island, yeah. Yeah, she goes, <laughs> no, I will not risk the lives of my men. That's fucking dumb. And then they go, <laughs> He's like, but they've got decks. And, and then like, it's just this Whoa, pause. Change everything. The whole, like, whole oh, army. Like, a, like a switch got flipped where she's like, Dex? You know? The thing is, there's a lot of history about Dex we do not know. I think he's yeah. probably like everybody's everybody's, boy, everybody's yeah. best friend. They all have him. Yeah. Like, if they're Snapchat, yeah, yeah. somebody Dex is the first fucking person yeah. they're Snapchat. Literal but, hundreds die in his name <laughs> in this film. Like, because I think there's a throwaway line that like he helped design the airstrip. Yeah. So maybe he's like he's just in everybody's good books. Yeah. So they're like, if we lose Dex, you know, we'll lose World War Two. We'll, we'll lose, lose the planet. We'll, yeah. Yeah, yeah, all this technology will go to waste. He's yeah, like, this yeah. genius on the planet. The yeah. suicide yeah. cults that would start <laughs> yeah. Dex were to go. <laughs> yeah, but it is weird, yeah. Well, she's like, I'm not, it's like, I'm part of the British Navy. I can't just, you know, or Air Force. He's like, mm-hmm. I can't just, you know, roll in, you know, with these hundreds of soldiers who may lose their lives. Yeah, and, and, and like, he says, like, Dex, and she's like, ah, shit, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, but they've got Dex. And what are we going like, to do without oh, right, that right. gum-chewing god? <laughs> <laughs> so, and then they get into the air. Yeah, where... and I... This is my favourite sequence of the whole movie. I love these planes, the Amphibious Squadron, where they put on, <laughs> they put on these big bubble space-looking helmets yeah, and they yeah. go into these planes uh, who dive down and they're all submarine planes as well. Yeah, the propellers like stop and then they slide back to the back of the wings to become propellers. It's like a toy. Such a cool little design thing. Yeah, yeah it's such a cool... I'm, I'm really shocked no toys were made for this movie no like, toys were made no in my mind if I was a studio exec and I had this on my plate I was like fucking hell like call up Mattel and Hasbro there were so many toys you could have made out of this movie what, so, so... what age rating was this film rated uh, PG 
PG-13 not oh, the most? Right, okay. you know, not, not a yeah, lot. There's not a lot. Yeah. But then again, they so made that's... toys of Robocop when that came out, and that's an 18. That's you know, yeah. it's like... That's, a, make... that's a collectible. It is, yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> they make toys of everything. Um, but, yeah, there, there were so many, like, cool contraptions and creatures and vehicles and things in this. You totally could have made, like, a gluttony of toys. It's like 90... It's like uh, Diesel Punk G.I. Joe, basically, this universe. So it's mm. like, you could have made so many cool toys. Well, talk about the talk about the Easter egg because uh, I, oh, I, yeah. I I wouldn't have, yeah. I wouldn't have seen it if so, Rowan didn't yet show Yet another to me. movie reference is that as they're on their way to the island, they pass the wreckage of a ship, which is the Venture, which is the ship from King Kong. Yeah. Oh. So it's implied that Totenkopf's island is Skull Island. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. So that's a little. Yeah. 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 So what you're saying is like that, that in the kaiju universe, there's going to be a new Sky Captain coming. Exactly. Oh, exactly. imagine they pull that out of the bag. <laughs> Sky Captain in the world tomorrow too. <laughs> Sky Captain versus Godzilla. And oh shit. shit, mate! I'd watch that. I don't know if anyone else would, but I'd fucking. You'd watch just fire his bullets at it. <laughs> <laughs> I watch the show. I have to say, I did like the scene. The the only downside I have to say about it is that Atlantis the Lost Empire did it better. That's they cool. have a, such an amazing scene which is more or less like this underwater thing where they're getting torn apart by the giant robot. Yeah, yeah. You know, and oh, I just yeah. 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 Atlantis the Lost Empire is a film to maybe talk about in another podcast because I, I do like I think that is underrated. It's a great film. Yeah. yeah. So eventually through this big battle sequence with all these robots there's <laughs> torpedoes that have locked onto his plane. She intercepts them to get them to lock onto her plane then she rams her plane and the torpedoes into this machine mm. ejecting right at the last minute. Yeah, it's a really fucking cool move. awesome move. Yeah. They end up getting through and yeah, into getting to Skull Island. Island. Eventually they get into Totenkopf's main base which, of course, is inside a volcano. Yeah. Because, oh, of yeah, course, it is. Yeah. Uh, and his ultimate plan is revealed, which is that he's building a giant rocket ship full of animals led two by two. Yeah. To, Noah's Ark, yeah. Yeah, Noah's Ark to uh, escape the Earth because he thinks it's going to be doomed. And, uh, it's this already is, corrupt. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And, uh, which, which at, at that point I said <laughs> yeah, you were well, like, that doesn't right. seem like an evil plan like, it, it kind of makes sense and then he, he adds on and, and then as soon as he's far away from the earth the earth will be incinerated so it's like oh, oh wait there's the yeah. evil bit okay because uh, eventually they meet up with Dex and the kidnapped scientists who have uh, escaped from their prison and sort of whirling about in this little hovercraft Dex is just chilling he's chilling yeah, yeah. he's alright where's Dex's story in all this <laughs> yeah. Dex's DLC subplot yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. so uh, Dex basically explains that when the rocket ignites its main booster to break orbit, the uh, detonation of uh, that fuel will be so intense that it will ignite Earth's atmosphere. So uh, they have a little run around this base, punching some robots in the face. Zapping them with uh, Dex's... Zapping them with Dex's ray gun. And this is when they, they get to Totenkopf's office, and this is one of the most baffling additions to the movie. Totenkopf is played, I say that in quotes, by Sir Lawrence Olivier, who, when this movie was made was dead for, I think, 10 plus years or something. And basically the reason, and they do this weird thing where Totenkopf like, projects a hologram of himself for his face to appear. To he be becomes like, Zordon from Paris. Yeah, to, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to be like, who approaches and, and shit. <laughs> One of the producers who's part of the De Laurentiis family, who's a very famous family of producers, they were like, you need a big star in this movie. You need like a big, you know, powerhouse British actor. Even though they already had... <laughs> were there none in the past 70 years? <laughs> Even though Michael Gambon shows up earlier in the movie. Yeah. But apparently Michael Gambon wasn't good enough for Mr. De Laurentiis. So he said, like, where's Laurence Olivier? Get Laurence Olivier. I haven't seen him in a movie in a while. Yeah. And then someone <laughs> told him, well, he's dead. <laughs> so then De Laurentiis was like, okay, well, you're using all this fancy new digital technology. Can't you just, you know, bring him back? So this might have been what contributed massively to the film's budget, actually, is that they had to contact Sir Laurence Olivier's estate and get permission oh to use his gosh. likeness in the movie, all for the trouble of, like, a couple of shots. So they went through all this trouble, and I don't really get the point. You know, fun fact, they actually did dug up his corpse for the next <laughs> shot. <laughs> <laughs> Those are real magazine records. <laughs> The producer did it himself, yeah. yeah. He's like, get that guy. <laughs> get a shovel. We need a God, he's, he's still got it. <laughs> when they get into his office, they realize that Tolkov has actually been dead for like 20 years. 
And uh, basically, this whole system is running on automatic. All the robots and so on are just obeying the programming that he set them. This is when they have to do the classic thing of we have to get aboard the rocket and we have to do some technical jiggery pokery to blow it up. Uh, But we won't make it. Yeah, yeah, whoever goes there, it's a one-way trip. This is one of the bit which you guys found hilarious, and it is hilarious. It is (laughs) fucking cathartic. (laughs) (laughs) Because it's when Joe is like, "Well, I'll be the one to do the heroic self-sacrifice," and then Polly's like, "No, I'm 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 coming coming with you, you, Joe." (laughs) And he's like, "You can't, Polly. It's too." dangerous and he's like oh but joe i want to and then he's like well okay and then he gives her a big kiss like all romantic the music swells and then as soon as he pulls away he clocks her in the face and knocks her out yeah <laughs> which she returns in kind later on yeah. so you know i got yeah. catharsis for both characters yeah. which i was very happy with it just comes out of left yeah. field right like, field because right well yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly but it's yeah. it's just like god damn i know so this which is they both deserve to yeah. <laughs> so this is when they get in, they finally get into, into the rocket as it blasts off and there was one of my favorite shots in the whole movie where it cuts back to uh totenkopf's office and you see his corpse in the chair yeah. looking out the window as the rocket blasts off that shot i think aside from the chair and the corpse that's in it everything in that shot is CGI. Yeah. And it's such a well-composed little shot. Yeah. And I feel like... Apart from the corpse, of course. <laughs> who dug up as previously. <laughs> and I feel like if the character of Totenkopf was more well-engineered and there was sort of stronger character depth with everyone, it would have been a really powerful kind of this-is-this-man's-legacy kind of yeah. shot. And like, yeah. you know... There's a really nice bit I like as well when they find his corpse in the office that the last thing he has in his hand is a little rolled up piece of paper which simply says forgive me on it. Yeah. I really like that moment. There's all these little touches where I feel like if the character writing was just a bit stronger it could have been a really powerful kind of emotional piece of like melancholy you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, But I really like that shot. They're in the rocket as it's blasting off. Dex and the other scientists are already away on that hovercraft and they're trying to climb to you know the MacGuffin point to disable the the rocket and uh Polly has a bit of a change of heart and she ejects all the animals that are packed on and they escape, <clears throat> thankfully escape through parachutes. And Thank uh, God, I thought she just burned like one, two of every species. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> also, why did he why did he put that in place for the I guess, parachute? I assume it's for the landing. Uh, that's for whatever mm. planet okay, the landing yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's fair. Yeah. <laughs> I think they were just going to crash into whatever planet they came <laughs> Hope for the best. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. He truly was mad in the end. <laughs> 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 Totten why why is this rocket designed to plunge face first into this rock? He's like, don't question it. It's genius. <laughs> then there's a, a really cool shot that I like because when they're crossing this tiny little spindly like bridge, beam, yeah, yeah, this little spindly bridge, and there's a shot which I really like, which is when the compartments beneath them are ejecting. Joe grabs onto Polly and like hits the deck, yeah, and the brace. and the whole floor beneath him just goes like drops out from underneath him. It's a really cool little shot. And then there's also this giant statue of an angel wielding a sword. Mm-hmm. which I guess he put there just for shits and giggles just for the set piece yeah. Yeah. this guy was really into his yeah. Uh, architecture yeah because okay. yeah. then they have like a whole set piece where the sword comes loose yeah they've got to run just, they have to run across the bridge before the sword cuts the bridge in half which I actually think is a cool set piece and then they do some jiggery pokery at the last minute the assassin comes back and once again it's a real naff Final confrontation. It's really because, flat again because Joe says, "Like, why won't you die?" And it's like you. This is the first tried, time you tried. You yeah. literally tried once. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In in the total of their fights, yeah. they hit her with a crowbar once. <laughs> yeah. At that point, and then he yeah. just zaps her, and she's dead. Before he was trying to, you know, like, cut, cut the wires, the yeah. wires and he's just like, eh, and just shoves yeah. the whole thing in. Yeah. Eventually, at the last minute, they do what they need to do. Yeah, the rocket circuit. circuit. The rocket's yeah. coming down, and then they see, aha. An escape pod. Yeah, it was very convenient. Yeah, very convenient, very deus ex machina last minute. Whatever. I was hoping that they just had like some really dangerous animal in there, <laughs> and they had to like fight like yeah. a squad of baboons to get that <laughs> escape pod. <laughs> I like how of all of the animals you went with a squad of baboons. <laughs> Whatever that was most violent and the most <laughs> tearing. What, what did the baboons do to you, Callum? It was the first vicious animal I could think of just tearing apart Joe and Paul. You know what? Baboons are like this They're is nasty, a sidetrack. Yeah. They aim for like biting off I, I remember they aimed to bite off a man's penis one time. They aimed for the penis. They knew what they were doing. I but I don't do know. Do they any always other... go for the penis? No, I don't know if they always go for the penis, but in this one instance, it went straight for the guy's Whoa. dick. Like yeah. that's a fucking vicious animal. Yeah, that's right a there. scary. The booms are nasty. Yeah. Yeah. Don't go on the wrong side. Which of is you. why Paul and George should have fallen. <laughs> 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 so, anyway, yeah. the, last, the rocket 
detonates and uh, Frank Cook shows up again with a whole fleet of mobile airships and like a, a legions and legions yeah. of uh, those air, cool aircraft. Which he didn't All have before. No. Yeah. I guess the he just Almighty called Dex. in some backup or whatever. Yeah, so but, uh, and this is when all the animals land safely in the water because they're and parachutes. Yeah, beautiful shot. Yeah, you do get a, a really nice bit of comp- composition shot-wise and music as well. Yeah. Frank and Polly open up their pod covered yeah. in baboon hair and blood. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, Christ. <laughs> <laughs> the things we've done. <laughs> Joe's jo lost an eye. Polly's lost half her hair. <laughs> <laughs> Joe is bleeding from the crotch after his penis has been taken off. <laughs> In fighting the animals, they became the animals. <laughs> it's like it's a whole it's a whole per- like piece just at the end of the film. It's like a quote comes up on screen. The time of the sky captain is over. The time of the baboon has come. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> So the movie ends on their running gag. Um, so earlier, so Polly has had two shots left in her camera for the longest time. Uh, she lost one because in a chase she shot the ground by accident. Yeah. Then the last minute she's like, what do I take a picture of? She sees like this amazing shot of all the escape pods coming down with the animals in front of the big volcanic island. But she chooses instead to turn the camera to Joe's big mug and snap a picture of him. But at the last minute, it turns out she forgot to take the lens cap. And he just says that to her. Yeah. And then you just see the smile yeah. just... She goes cool down and cut the credits, and it just Fate cuts the credit. Yeah. And with the amazing music in the background, yeah. like just swelling up. Yeah. yeah, it's a bit of a. I didn't hate that running gag. Yeah, but it's not a particularly strong thing to go out on. Yeah. Final thoughts, guys. Well, <laughs> Cal- <laughs> Cal- <laughs> the, the enthusiasm in their fucking voice this, in this fucking film. Cal- this does not film want to deal with this at all. Took so much from me. <laughs> I feel like my. A, like corpse joke gave you more joy <laughs> than the entire film that you just watched. Like not even any other kind of just like fine font. <laughs> so I, credits. I'll go first because I'm okay, gonna get this. I'll, we'll I'll end on a high. I'll, go, yeah, I'll, 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 let, I'll let I'll let Rowan finish off to yeah, give yeah. some positive. So light. you despise this movie. I uh, didn't like the look of the film. It was very jarring. Couldn't get into it. No suspension of disbelief for me, apart from maybe two or three times in the film. Unlikable characters. One of the worst films I've seen in my life. Definitely in the top five worst films ever. So, <laughs> Is there any there. other f- thoughts you'd like to share with us about... Uh, go out, find a copy of this, and burn it, please. <laughs> Fucking hell. Jesus. Mm. I think that it's like a good kind of charming film with what they had. It was kind of like the little mm. film that could, yeah. in my opinion. I enjoyed sitting down and watching it, but there are a lot of points where I was taken out of it for a second Mm. by some of the visuals, as Callum said before. But I was able to go back into it because it's got a lot of things going for it. I think it's got a good cast, uh, even though the writing isn't the Mm. best. I think that the soundtrack really holds the film up a lot Mm. as well. I think those two things are what made me like Mm. it a lot. But yeah, it's a pretty weak script, but it does what... This is nowhere near the worst film that I've seen Mm -hmm. This year, it's it's a good it's a good film. I'm not going to say it's a great film. I'm going to say it's a good film. That's my final thoughts. For me, the reason I really like it, I totally understand why people would be put off with it, because the style is so specific and so bold. But I really respect the ambition of the production to try and go for this on such a scale with such limited resources. What makes this movie so enjoyable and why I love rewatching it is just like the world and the imagination on display and the creativity. I mean, even if you, you know, don't like the effects and so on, the filmmaking on display is really strong. The way it's edited, the way it's shot, there's some beautiful compositions in here, there's some terrific action sequences in here. I love watching it and seeing, you know, the big mecha robots going around. I love, I even love the flappy planes. They're weird, you know. I love the big mobile airstrip. I love I love all the diesel punk and the design of everything. And I, again, I want the toys. It's one of those things where I feel like if it was like Angelina Jolie was the main character 
and Frank Cook was the sky captain. That's your winning movie right there. You've got a great central character. I think it could have saved it, yeah. In general, for me, the movie, I love inhabiting that world and I love the design and the look of everything and the visuals. I feel like if they'd maybe fiddled it around a little bit and updated it to have more interesting characters, or even if it was just Joe and Frankie mm. as the main as the two main characters and just cut remove Polly altogether, then it would have been a lot stronger. There are problems with it, but I really enjoy it. And it one of, it's one of those movies which I find very inspirational, is why I really mm-hmm. like it. It makes me want to create stuff I love you guys but I just didn't love this film (laughs) (laughs) fair enough well fair enough it's not for everybody right okay so the second week we uh, pick uh, we have is mine uh, which is Small Soldiers Major Chip Hazard reporting for duty sir wow voice activated commandos team pet tail dog soldiers Rick Bazooka ready to spring into action Butch meat hook, prepare to go to distance. Hit nitro, demolition. <laughs> Kip Killigan, sharp as a razor. You are the best of the best. Heartland play systems. I'm having trouble with the commando elite. Ah, it's like they're alive. Let's roll some armor. We got us a war to win. The few. We have met the enemy. He is big. He is fast. Yeah. The Proud. He has revealed a weakness. Alan, please, you have to help. <laughs> Major Chip Hazard wants a war. We'll give him a war. The Small. Who are you calling Small? This summer. Babes at 12 o'clock. Join the Commando Elite. Gentlemen, those are reinforcements. Commandos, attack! No mercy! Incoming! Small Soldiers. Amazing. Small Soldiers. Uh, uh, this is a film that takes me way back uh, to when I was a kid, and it was just one of those films that not a lot of people saw. As soon as we start the film, we see a global tech advert <laughs> play, which is something straight out of a Robocop film, that yeah. kind of very dry like the news humor yeah. that, uh, who is it, who... Um, that Joe Dante is uh, yeah. injecting into the film. Uh, he does a great job yeah. throughout. So this was basically uh, Universal and DreamWorks' response to Toy Story. However, Joe Dante is the guy who directed Gremlins. Mm-hmm. So oh, I, I, didn't yeah, I see that. So oh. basically, it's in a weird mishmash where it was. It's probably one of the reasons it flopped. It was a response to Toy Story and was kind of marketed to be like another Toy Story ish film. But if you look, go back and look at Gremlins, it's a pretty violent and like dark, darkly hilarious film, and it's got all these kinds of weird humor and things about it, and it's pretty brutal and violent and. Because Joe Dante is also directing Small Soldiers, he's got this weird, violent tinge to it, which kind of miscolors the whole thing. You know what, though? Um, I think that this is one of the films that really um, brought me, brought my comedy. Like, I really grew, like, I grew up with this, and I think my comedy and, like, what I find funny is a lot to do with these kinds of films. Yeah. So I love that it's got that kind of fuck it attitude. Uh, it's a PG, um, mm. but it's it, it, there's a lot of adult themes throughout, you know, even if it's just hinted yeah. at. But right away, we're introduced to, um, I've, in my notes, I've got, uh, we introduce the two idiots who start this shit. <laughs> yeah. Irwin and Larry. Uh, now, Irwin and Larry are both um, in a toy company that has just been bought over by Global Tech. Which is a weapons manufacturer. Yeah, which is a weapons manufacturer. <laughs> and th- is only bought this uh, toy company because they just want to make profits, yeah. essentially. Uh, so they basically each have to, uh, to the corporate guy, I'm just going to call him corporate guy. It um, is Mars. Mars. What's the actor's name? Dennis Leary. Dennis Leary is great in the role. Yeah, he's really he's really good. Such um, an asshole. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but he plays it so well, yeah. you know. And it's not like he's he's not like a cartoon version no, no. of what a CEO is. He's just a CEO who just has no time for he cut, cuts all the fat yeah. out. Because what I liked about it, we were saying this when it, when we were watching it, is that this opening sequence with the two guys going in to pitch their new product to the boss. 
is ripped right out of RoboCop. The scene in yeah. RoboCop where it's the uh, young executives going into the boardroom and basically does the, the Ed 209 demonstration, mm-hmm. which fails, and then Bob uh, Morton comes in and pitches the RoboCop, is almost the exact scene. But each, yeah, Erwin and Larry uh, both present their factions that become our protagonists and antagonists of mm-hmm. the film. So first of all, we have the Gorgonites, who are the, the good guys. Yeah. They're all about learning. And they're really um, portrayed as pacifists yeah. in the film. Uh, they're, and they're, but they're, they all look like monsters. They're all, you know, mm. different, unique kind of uh, monsters. And well, they're meant to be like an educational toy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And um, then the CEO's like... Wait, learning? Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah We're yeah. not gonna have kids learn. Yeah, no yeah. one likes that. <laughs> I, I really like that because it's almost like what um, a producer would be like. You know, it's yeah, that yeah. it kind of mirrors that. Yeah. Um, there is uh, that. I think it's Larry who uh, then presents the commando elite. Yeah. Um, everything else <laughs> is just, just a toy. toy. Fun fact: the pitch video he shows him uh-huh. was the teaser trailer for the movie. That's cool. Yeah, oh, I of, like that. Of, uh, yeah, because you see Chip Hazard, who's mm-hmm. the leader of the Commando Elite, played by Tommy Lee Jones, to to perfection. Yeah, uh, basically, iconic. yeah, Absolutely it just, it just zooms in on his toy box and he punches his way out of the yeah. the the toy, yeah. which leads us on perfectly to the box. next story beat because then the CEO goes, "Can he actually do that?" <laughs> yeah. They're like, "Uh, no, no not really," because this is. 1998 <laughs> yeah. and we can't do this shit yeah. not even Boston Dynamics can do that now yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly we're still having him run up boxes and shit so uh, he basically buys not just uh, not just really really powerful chips he buys military grade yeah. X-1000 chips this, this chip is supposed to be in missiles that <laughs> home in on th- yeah. shit to blow up yeah, yeah. And, and he, he puts it in a toy. He's so excited because yeah. he's like, oh yeah, this is going to work. Yeah. Uh, and just at this point, I want to point out the music by Jerry Goldsmith. Jerry Goldsmith. Oh. The late, great Jerry Goldsmith. I love the soundtrack yeah. for this it's entire it's film. Brilliant. The yeah. Commando Elite. The, the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so good. I was saying uh, to you guys, it was almost like Ghost in the Shell, yeah. kind of, you know, the credits yeah. coming up as... The toy the, gets assembled. The toy is getting assembled. Yeah. What I what I love about these two main characters, one of the aspects which I feel my, my kind of general thoughts on this one was that I do really like it. But one of the weakest aspects I think are a lot of the human characters. Mm-hmm. The toys are easily the best part of the film by far. Yeah. And then whenever they're on screen, it's it's great. Yeah. A lot of the human characters are really annoying, but these. Like three guys you meet at the beginning of uh, Mars, the CEO and Larry and Irwin yeah. are really, really entertaining. Yeah, they're really funny. Yeah, they're they're, they're the most endearing in yeah. some ways. I think that they've just got a bit more. I don't know a depth to them in terms of just how they're played. I don't know about a depth, but I feel like they're well, maybe not the CEO, but the <laughs> other two. Guys, I, don't, I don't know about a depth. I, I, I feel I like, like their personalities and the performances from the actors are in sync with the tone of the movie mm-hmm. more than others. Yeah, I feel like. yeah, sure. Getting into the film, we are introduced to Alan. So um, Alan Aberdeathy. Yeah, Alan the arsonist, as we will. Alan the boy band haircut man. Yeah, yeah, Alan's he's got. Dead in the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> he's got this. He's got this great nineties hairdo where you, it's the curtains. Yeah. Uh, Every nineties male teenage protagonist yeah long curtains yeah. yeah um even in animated movies they had that hairdo yeah oh yeah yeah <laughs> yeah and yeah. he's basically got this um toy shop that his dad owns that's just a bit <laughs> it's called the inner child it's called the inner child yeah <laughs> and um it's well, no wonder business is going down <laughs> yeah. where are you going i'm just going inside the inner child <laughs> Jesus Christ. basically his dad's business is failing because it's a bit crap. It's like very old school. Mm. There's no violent toys yeah. allowed in this uh, like toy model shop. trains and shit. Yeah. He goes out his way to say, like, no war toys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, okay, yeah. like, it's fine. It's fine. The sex toys are in the back, but no <laughs> war toys, guys. Okay, come on. <laughs> the, uh, the dad is away mm. for the weekend to basically go to a seminar yeah, about how story. to uh, intro- like, you know, introduce new elements that will improve the toy shop obviously it's failing <laughs> you're introduced to Joe who is like a global Dick Miller Dick Miller he's yeah. also in Gremlins I just think he's a really endearing guy yeah I think he's, he's, a, re- he's really likeable he's a great the he's a great that guy actor um, basically yeah. he gets a hold of a, a loan if you will of yeah. uh, some of these toys um, some Gorgonites some uh, Commando Elite uh, he gets like a set a full set of both Kirsten Dunst is then brought into the shop 
he's mm. trying to, you know, say, you know, like, oh, he's hey, trying uh, to, he's trying to flash his yeah, boy bandy locks on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> she, her, her little brother is uh, going in for a uh, a toy, like he's into the violent toys. So he's uh, obviously just trying to keep her around mm. long enough to you know flirt with her as much as yeah. possible. One major criticism with the film is that Alan Abernathy and his family, and to a degree Kirsten Dunst and her boyfriend, who's barely a, who's like a non character, yeah. are easily the weakest part of the film. I don't like his character that much, and it's yeah. it's re- it's weirdly written mm-hmm. because they establish that. He burnt down his previous school or something, and he's like a troubled kid, and he's been in and out of different schools, and he's been all over and in trouble. Doesn't really have any of that come on screen. Exactly, because the guy on screen is like the most boring. You know, yeah, he's yeah. Like, he's so dull and kind of. He's the he's the teenager that's yeah. angsty yeah. and that other teenagers can go. I can relate to that. Yeah, he's pretty much a blank slate performance wise, but they give him this backstory of being like this troubled, you know, rebel anarchist yeah. kid, and it's like. None of it comes across on screen. Oh, I would dispute that at certain times. <laughs> <laughs> but, also, but also, none of it factors into the story is what bothers me as well. It's a really weird, extraneous element. So Alan uh, actually takes his bag with him, and when he gets back home, Archer's in the bag. And mm. we have the first kind of interaction where Archer um, is on screen talking with um, Alan and just like, just their dialogue. I like how Archer's just very curious by everything, and like there's there's uh, some great music again by Jerry Goldsmith. Mm. You know, the, it's almost like the learning kind of music. Alan goes to bed, and then Archer goes on the internet. Yeah. The fastest nineties internet. <laughs> he's opening up yeah. tabs quicker than the yeah. fucking Pentagon could. Like, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, he's got he's got high breath. <laughs> there's no dial up tone. There's like there's no loading. He, bars, he's, he's, like, he's, he's got some Matrix shit yeah. going he's, on yeah, right He's now. living in 2008. <laughs> it's just yeah. like clickety clickety click and you get it all like fast. <laughs> super oh, 2008? Was that, was that we... the fastest? It's all the downhill from there. It's, 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 old it's, age. it's better It's better than 1990, <laughs> no, was it 1998? Yeah. yeah. There you go. Um, <laughs> basically like Archer starts learning about uh, the whole... The whole shebang, what's been going on in the world, you get a little clip of Hitler in there as well, just for <laughs> yeah. a split second, because you have to, because Hitler it's and Kennedy were the first two faces, I think, that popped up. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's quite a contrast. <laughs> while, while, uh, while he's kind of learning yeah. and processing, you uh, go back yeah. to the commando elite, who, just like in the advert, they verbatim, yeah. he punches Punch and rips his way out of the box. I... Love these characters. Yeah. For me, the Commando Elite are the highlight of the film. Easily my favorite characters, but also because I am a big, such a big toy lover, I want these toys. They're <laughs> so well designed as toys. They're so they're just the personalities are drawn so well, and I'm like, I really want them. Each one has <laughs> their own thing. Like with yeah. Gorgonite Swell, each one has their own thing. I had yeah. uh, a Nick Nitro. <laughs> Major Chip Hazard mm. and Archer, yeah. and they're they're incredible. I know. Toys. Yeah, I had an Archer toy, um, <laughs> yeah. which I put pe- my pennies into. <laughs> <laughs> I was really annoyed. He used as a loaded weapon. <laughs> <laughs> I was really annoyed because like I wanted these toys so badly, but I didn't get them. I was like, I had Action Man, no knock at Action Man. But I wanted these. These looked so cool. <laughs> Action Man shit compared to these. Things. <laughs> oh yeah, these were the real ones. They, yeah, they've got like they've just got a lo- such a cool design, and I love Tommy Lee Jones and the dialogue with all of the, yeah. the all of the other commandos is so funny and yeah. so I don't know if witty is the word, but there's just a kind of a bite to every single line they say, which is so funny. It just makes you chuckle. There's times when I'm drunk and if someone <laughs> insults me or like if uh, someone's getting on my nerves, I'll just be like, Gorgonite scum. <laughs> <laughs> so what we have is all of the uh, commando elite basically go rag inside <laughs> the inner child and basically tear up one of the uh, Gorgonites yeah. whilst the others are able to get away. Like, rip them limb. Yeah, you, yeah, I can't remember what his name is. It's, I think it's the one that they Frankenstein. Yeah, it's the Frankenstein right? one. Yeah, yeah. Um, basically, Alan comes back to the shop. He's like, what the hell's happened? Yeah. Everything's gone. Gorgonites, commando elite alike. He goes home, but now they're tracking because they know that... Um, yeah. Alan has yeah. um, Archer in his bag. Yeah. 
they've got this operation to like slingshot their biggest guy who's called like Brick Bazooka I think is his name oh, yeah it's to, a great they've got great names yeah to uh, slingshot Brick Bazooka onto Alan's bike to yeah. get Archer who's in the backpack and there's a brilliant line from uh, Chip Hazard where as yeah. they're like getting ready to fire like you, you just hear Chip Hazard go don't fire until you see the white of his eyes <laughs> <laughs> it's such a good line it's just some like really good humour I good. will say the one inconsistency of the film the one minor flaw this film has is that <laughs> it's not sure what toy what uh what weapons that the Commando Elite have yeah. are legit or not when they're in the packaging. Because yeah. they immediately realise they have plastic toys, Chip Hazard breaks it and goes, well, standard, yeah, issue. The gun, yeah. standard issue, it won't work. But then all their little knives yeah. are yeah. genuine or knives. Real knives. <laughs> they keep them throughout the entire yeah. fucking film. Who who does that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Who's like, yeah, I'm going to sharpen this little fucking thing <laughs> yeah. in here. It just, yeah. just doesn't make any sense. Yeah. But you compared this bit to Shadow of the Colossus. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. I was laughing at that. But yeah, yeah basically he's like trying to like go up you know, this bike. And, you there's know, a there's point to the obstacles. bike where he has to hold and wait for his climbing meter to charge. So <laughs> yeah. A dog like gives him hassle. Yeah. He gets that out of the way. He keeps on climbing, yeah. and eventually his legs get lodged in the back of the wheel yeah, like and cogs, rips yeah. him apart. His legs are yeah. ripped off, <laughs> and he basically has to get put back together yeah. by the rest of the squad. It, like, cuts him in half. But he <laughs> he radios it in, yeah. and it's just like they have. The, the, the toy first aid kits are also a thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah they, they work as well. They're yeah, legit. and they're just putting them together yeah. at the side of the road. And I'm just like, <laughs> if anybody saw that, what the fuck are you going to do? Ah, uh, see, see, they were in camouflage. So it's oh, yeah, 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 okay, yeah, yeah. okay, yeah. okay yeah. Or if they Good saw thinking. someone, they would have just gone and stabbed them to death. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, yeah. They've just been like, kill that guy. <laughs> Glaswegian version of it. <laughs> They're still able it's to awesome. track Alan down, though. Yeah, like, uh, yeah. Because yeah. they have this cool thing with their vision where they're able they've to... They've got Terminator vision. Yeah, they basically yeah. have Terminator vision, but yeah. better because they're actually able to like yeah. identify certain things. Yeah. And again, who built that into a toy? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, fucking... La- what is it? Larry, Larry did. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's an imbecile. Yeah. We need an optic system that has this software in place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like, and Alan, uh, because he's hmm. basically been shouted at by his uh, dad, he's all pissy at Archer. Yeah. And uh, he's like, oh, don't talk to me for a bit. He goes, yeah. puts on his 90s tunes. <laughs> and meanwhile... Yeah. yeah, whilst Archer gets fucking captured yeah, yeah. Gets inside. Jumped, yeah. yeah, and then basically Alan comes down just the right time because they're about to, like... Um, the it's like the disposal. food disposal things. Yeah, yeah. It's like a classic kind of... A guy on a wire yeah. getting slowly lowered in. It's like a Batman 60s show, like, death trap. Yeah, know? yeah. <laughs> and uh, Alan's basically grabs one of the guys, uh, what's his name? Nick Nitro. Nick Nitro, Nick Nitro, Nitro, Nitro yeah. that's it. And he just shoves him into the <laughs> yeah. fucking disposal, just cutting him in half. Yeah. Like, completely. His legs are gone. He dies. Um, and there's a big heartfelt bit. With yeah. uh, with him and then uh, <laughs> they put <laughs> him into... Buzzard, the bad guy in the film yeah. shares a sentimental tear yeah. for his fallen yeah. comrade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, he's like holding him in his arms. And the guy's like, "Did did we win? <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> we win." Yeah. I know. Yeah, they they I, I, I do like the depth that the yeah. commando elite yeah. do have. <laughs> they are like psychopaths because yeah. that's all that they're programmed yeah, to yeah. do. But it, it, there is there is parts where you're just mm. like, damn, you know? Yeah. That, that guy crawled all that way yeah. to the warehouse where they were uh, kicking themselves yeah. out and the garage, then yeah. fell through the fucking window. <laughs> that's commitment. But that's a good point that the garage, which to them is a massive warehouse oh, as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> they do so much great things with the size and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, basically. <laughs> and yeah. Um, so the uh, Alan uh, finds the rest of the Gorgonites because he's like, where would they hide? Because... Mm we established that they aren't dead, they're just hiding. Yeah. And he's like, where would they hide? It's classic, you know? It's like Independence Day, you know? Where it's just like, falls straight into it, mm. you know, like, what the answer is. Mm. But, you know, he's like, oh, what, what would they... And he, like, throws, like, a piece of paper or something yeah. into the bin. He's like, I, 
Got it. I love it when that happens in movies. That has not happened to me once in my entire life. When I'm like doing a weird innocuous thing and it like gives me the answer to my one of my problems. Mm. Yeah, I know. <laughs> that, that's also like in horror films. So when you're mm. you're kind of, kind of like feeling a bit like oh I feel a bit spooked and then your friend out of the blue goes hey <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. never happens either. Yeah. I know, it's like yeah. I've never been like brushing my teeth and then like as I've put the toothpaste on the brush I'm like. Of course, I know what to do now. <laughs> it's like yeah. it's, it's only happens in movies. I know. Yeah, you know? I don't. I don't know. I've I mean, like boiled a kettle and just been like, I, I know what to do. Steam. Yeah, yeah of I know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, it, it gets us on to the next plot point, point <laughs> yeah. which we have both uh, factions now. Yeah. They're both. They're both like you know. Yeah. All the members are there. They Frankenstein together. Uh, the, the member of the Gorgonites that was, was like ripped, up, ripped yeah. apart and they used such a cool design yeah they used yeah. like a radio mm. in him uh, to like <laughs> help save him uh, at this point Alan is starting to sext up uh, Christy Christy who <laughs> has a boyfriend at this point yeah, yeah. yeah. Who, who becomes a, who just he's like a non-factor I think his Christy one just... characteristic is that he rides a motorbike and it's there red. You go. There you go, yeah. <laughs> Christy loves bad boys, of okay. course. Yeah. So she was like, wow, Brad has a motorcycle. I want to date him. But then when she learns that Alan's a potential arsonist, arsonist well, no, well, he's not potential. He's, he's actually he's a he's convicted committed. arsonist. I don't know what is real and what is fake when it comes to Alan and what's <laughs> in his head. Yeah. I don't think there was anything on during those headphones. I think that was just the voices that Alan hears. Like, yeah. yeah, we're seeing yeah. before the crackling of the fire was yeah, uh, all he was like... listening to. <laughs> <laughs> basically, uh, they find out because there's a tech guy in the Commando Elite that's basically tapped into the. Uh, the phone yeah, call yeah. he's like oh I better I bet he'd give it all up for you I know I would <laughs> and then it's just like oh Alan and then he's like okay we've got a fucking instead of just storming their house we're gonna fucking storm somebody else's house kidnap well basically drug everybody inside apart from uh, the, kid, the kid which they tie boy. up I love this is what I was on about with the human characters I love Kirsty's parents <laughs> they are so funny uh, I can't remember the actors names but the mum is played by the voice of Francine from Cap... Uh, not Captain America, American Dad. Yeah. And the dad is the voice of Lionel Hutz yeah. from The Simpsons. He's, he's great in this. Yeah, they're such well-drawn characters with big personalities <laughs> where he's like super into tech things where he's got like this massive satellite dish in his background he's got this like gigantic television the I guess, perfect but, obnoxious name but he's also yeah, yeah. a big dick yeah he's, and he's he like, doesn't give a fuck yeah, about anybody yeah. he's really like yeah he's just completely inconsiderate and sort of he's all up in his own head and yeah. the wife is like kind trophy. of a moron yeah, yeah trophy <laughs> yeah. wife material yeah, she's yeah. That. Uh, we also didn't talk about um, one of the best cameos in the movie uh, earlier when Larry and Irvin are investigating um, what this chip actually is. They mm-hmm. go into this lab and they meet Robert Picardo yeah. uh, from Star Trek Voyager and Inner Space and a bunch of other things. And uh, he's the guy who designed the chip. It's just one of those things where the dialogue is just, it, it's just matches the tone of the film where mm. yeah, yeah. they're sort of like, oh, so uh, you designed this, this, this pretty good chip. And he's like, it's pretty not just a chip. pretty good chip. Yeah, yeah. He's like, the X-1000 yeah. is a masterpiece. masterpiece. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And he like, it's one of those things where like, if you need someone, this happens sometimes in like, older movies where they talk about like artificial intelligence where they're like you know it's got 20 megabytes of memory and you know up, like up to big up like how advanced this tech yeah. is and how yeah, cool yeah. this thing is and like Robert Picardo it's just one of those scenes where like they've just got the right guy which is Robert Picardo's do it where he's like but it's it, precise as well it doesn't get too into the techno <laughs> yeah, yeah. babble you know yeah. it goes like it's a really smart chip it's yeah. really cool. Yeah, he can. Uh, yeah, it learns yeah. what you've programmed yeah. it to learn. They, yeah, they, they, so they, that they, the software is yeah. the problem. They hit it's all the, the they hit all the, like the nineties buzzwords for like artificial intelligence is going to get out of hand. He's like, it can tap into any system and it can learn. You know. Yeah, yeah. That was one of those like the buzzwords of like the nineties. Yeah, it can if learn. if it was like a computer that was alive, is <laughs> a computer that can learn. It could yeah, only be know. more nineties if they were all wearing leather jackets. As well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah truly. Coming yeah, over yeah. their like little yeah. hazmat suits. <laughs> <laughs> so, in actuality, we've had computers that can learn like since the eighties, but. It's just one of those. This like, is AI. Yeah, though. it's like well, no, no, it's not artificial it's intelligence. It's intelligent. actual intelligence. Actual, yeah, 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 sure. <laughs> And then he yeah. sneezes all over it from his suit and it's yeah. just snot on it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do love the humor with yeah. those guys. Like, even though they're kind of they're they're kind of out of the main mm. plot until the very end of the film, their parts are very much 
for almost you know the, the older people mm. who are watching the film the bungling idea very <laughs> dry you can have a film with the two of them if it was yeah, written yeah, yeah. like well enough like they're really good and they bounce off each other really well yeah um they and have great chemistry with each other yeah right? yeah the licensed music as well oh yeah is great so i'm gonna say a couple of them I didn't know that Rock and Roll Part 2 was in this fucking <laughs> oh, movie. I remember, after, like, and, and just, just to clarify, we're not endorsing no, Gary, Gary Glitter, Glitter the, the, the pedophile. Um, this is a month in between all of us watching Joker. Yeah. So, yeah <laughs> so, big pop for that. Uh, another one bites the dust. But if clean. you want to be my lover... Yeah. Oh yeah, the Spice Girls. Yeah. Oh, okay. um, uh, Led Zeppelin. Led Zeppelin's in there, in there as well. Yeah, Communication yeah. breakdown. Exactly. So, uh, Frankie goes to Hollywood. War. Yeah. Awesome. Tr- just someone, like someone just had their playlist. And every you know? every song gets a perfect time for you oh. as well. It gets a time for you guys for to listen to it, mm. and it fits the scene perfectly. Yeah, mm. yeah. <laughs> so now we have the Commando Elite. Breaking into Kirsty's yeah, yeah. house, which is a great scene, and I think it's one of the most gremlins yeah. parts of the entire movie. Oh, hundred percent. Yeah. Where they basically like get you know makeshift to get a slingshot yeah. out of uh, a mouse trap, yeah. and then they yeah, fire. Yeah. yeah, they yeah, fire yeah. the uh, sleeping, sleeping pill, pills yeah. into the gin and tonics yeah. that they're both drinking. The commander really are really clever in that. They realize that the weaponry they came with is, is useless. Yeah. So part all, of their knives. <laughs> part of their knives. But all the stuff that they like Frankenstein together and like like build like in terms of weapons and vehicles and stuff is so creative. It's where, so creatively charming. Yeah. Where they take like the motor of like a lawnmower, but then like attach like a toaster firing cannon on top <laughs> of it, and, and like they do all these really creative things. Like what they make weapons out of is yeah. just really really. The props clever. team was really like yeah. it was really creative with this film. Yeah, yeah, I find, yeah. and yeah. I think. That, that if you look close enough with anything you find something new every time you watch the yeah, film yeah. after he knocks uh, well after they knock out Kirsty's folks mm. go upstairs they absolutely mob the kid and, <laughs> yeah. like, and tie him up yeah. I was like half expecting the Breaking Bad like stabbing scene in the prison with, like, <laughs> 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 it could have got real dark then yeah. god damn uh, and then the uh Kirsty's not home at that point. She's out with Brad. She's out with Brad doing yeah. Brad things. Doing Brad things. Riding around a motorcycle that's red. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Classic Brad. Classic Brad. Classic Brad. <laughs> if, it was a, if it was a motorcycle, <laughs> that, I don't think it's even a motorcycle, is it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. Or it's just like it's it's, it's, <laughs> it's just like a motorized scooter. <laughs> I, I don't know if it was like uh, just a high powered oh, one of those. It's one of those like it's like a it's one of those pedal bikes that's designed to look like a. Motorbike. <laughs> 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 so he gets under. He's like, "Hang on, babe." <laughs> every, every he's got scene. fake legs so that it looks like they're just at the sides, but he's actually pedaling inside the compartment. <laughs> Flintstone car. <Yeah. laughs> and uh, they basically find all of uh, Christie's yeah, like the, the uh, Wendy's, Wendy's, called. yeah, yeah. the Barbies. Yeah. Basically, but yeah, it's but it's legally distinct Barbies. Yeah, yeah, legally we can't call them Barbies, so they're Wendy's. Fuck yeah. it. And uh, they basically like makeshift this whole Frankenstein operation. <laughs> this is bit is so disturbing. This is amazing. <laughs> I love this yeah. bit, but it gave me the fear as a yeah. child. What they do to these Wendy dolls is genuinely terrible. Yeah, a, yeah. they're naked. B, yeah. they've taken all their hair off. C, they've put nails through them. They've melted half their faces. They, they, they've yeah, done they, all they, kinds they, of they weird things. They've fucked up their them. faces for no other reason yeah. other than. It's it's psychological warfare. Yeah. They, also, they also say like the the first one that like salutes to yeah. Major Chip has is like cannon fodder Wendy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I love that are. shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like those moments are great, yeah. and I think yeah. like as a chi- as a kid you're like watching that going all right, and then but as like the adult in the room you're like ah ha, 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 that's yeah. funny. That's so funny. You know, yeah. and th- like that's why I think even if you've watched it as a kid, it deserves a repeat viewing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, when you're an adult. Christy comes back home. <laughs> With Brad. With yeah, Brad waiting yeah. outside, yeah, yeah doing he, Brad things Brad again outside. To, Brad trying to do his thing. Yeah, get yeah lucky he, as well. he is. And I don't know what age these characters are. No. But it, he yeah. looks about 30. He, he does. <laughs> he looks like 18. Yeah. And she looks like 14 yeah. in this film. It's 14, always so 15. difficult as well because there's so many like high school dramas where like the people cast as people from high school are like are in their 30s you know yeah look at Spider-Man but yeah he's trying to get inside and he's basically saying (laughs) (laughs) in both ways (laughs) he is 
He is t- he's, he's like trying to fucking get through the window. <laughs> yeah, so. It's just the Eric Andre. Let me in. <laughs> Let me in. <laughs> but um, yeah. yeah, he's basically like trying to come up with a reason to get inside. Yeah. Whilst Kirsty's getting mobbed getting by up. all of the Wendy's and another. Fa- my, another one of my favourite Chip Hazard lines is when like she's been like gagged and tied oh, up yeah. and he leans over and he goes are you scared? it's okay to be scared and then he leans and he goes we're all scared yeah he, goes, he leans and he goes you have to be crazy not to be scared yeah. <laughs> it's such a good yeah. line and with Tommy Lee Jones voice I know, yeah with well, Tommy Lee Jones voice so is great <laughs> yeah the, the boyfriend comes up briefly Brad um, the boy Brad Brad. The boy. he finally got him yeah <laughs> but not in the, the way he wanted <laughs> Uh, and then he, he is... He, he, uh, does, he does his best. He, he, he's he, he gets <laughs> mauled by the cannon fodder yeah. at Wendy's. He's freaking out. and he then th- uh, He kills like two or three, yeah. and then he gets his trousers yeah. lit on fire, and then yeah. he rolls down the steps. Yeah, because he like he destroys a bunch of the Wendy's, and then Chip Hazard is there again Another with a line. flamethrower vehicle, and he goes, a gentleman and an officer does not strike a lady. He's and then like, his one, one of his only <laughs> lines in the film, he's like, what? <laughs> 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 and then they fucking... Shoot a flamethrower at him. Yeah, like yeah. His falls down the, the stairs. You could like, out, yeah. Yeah, yeah, grabs yeah. his pedal bike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and just that. Yeah, that's the last you see of Brad. Yeah. yeah, he's gone. Got, um, his, got his paycheck. Got out of there. Yeah, exactly. Then you have Alan, uh, basically concocting the plan, mm. coming round with the Gorgonite box. It's written on the side. It's got you know. Um, uh, mumbling you know, mumblings coming yeah. from inside. They were like, "Oh, why are you doing yeah. this?" Yeah. Places it down, yeah. and all the all the bad guys come out at this oh, part. Them, yeah. And uh, at this point, I was like looking at just <laughs> both both of you guys, and I was like, "Wouldn't it be funny if he just like came with a plank and just he just wailed on them, and just killed <laughs> all of like, them, just to run in and just fucking beat them all the time." If you've got a plank, you've got a big piece of wood, and you're up against these guys, yeah. they've got what? Like a knife this big? <laughs> it's, it's like the tiniest knife in the world. Like, you could just fuck them up. But yeah. no, he like it's obviously got to be a more elaborate plan. He attaches Archer to a to rocket. A, yeah, to like a firework or something, yeah. Uh, fires off, he parachutes in through the chimney, yeah. lets... Uh, Alan in, let's yeah. Alan in and then they go upstairs to let Christy out it's funny if the back door would just open yeah I mean <laughs> from back, Brad getting in earlier yeah. mm, <laughs> not the back door <laughs> <laughs> come on guys <laughs> uh, uh, basically they have uh, a great grand old time uh, smashing some Barbies yeah killing them all Kirsty gets really into it. She she uh, gets let loose for, by Archer. Archer then hides in the bag. She starts just wailing at them. Then they both have to escape because at this point they know that it's just a decoy. There's actually no Gorgonites inside. After they blow up, it's just a stereo. It's a big stereo. And they have the chase scene mm-hmm. where they're basically both get on the moped while war is playing as well. And yeah. I've just put down in like, yeah. I've put down here, war opening is fucking exceptional. Yeah. You have the, li- like this little line, I kind of, it's like, everyone leaves the light on? It's like, they all like turn around, it's like this explosion and then they all just yeah. charge out and this uh, just fucking, like, Whoa! <laughs> it's just great. Yeah. I love the chase yeah. Uh, yeah. that happens here because yeah. you see all of the commando elites kind of toys on yeah. display here. The they have like makeshift a, ones. They have yeah. the flamethrower that's like, <laughs> Out of some, I don't know what it is, but know. it just it just explodes out. It's out of such a small mm. thing. You think it's just gonna be a little puff, mm. but no, it's fuck, it's, it's fuck funny. Fuck you. It's funny though because like some of it you get. Where, yeah. Like, they turn like they use like a mouse trap and a spoon to make a catapult. They use a toaster to like eject some like darts. They use uh like a nail gun and they fire discs and things. But then I think during the chase they just gave up and said. Uh, now they have rockets. He's got a mini <laughs> missile. Yeah, they, just, they just have some missiles for some reason. Yeah, they, they that must be one of the toys that worked that came out. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so they, these are good. They have yeah. like yeah, these little missiles that y- they hit trees and the trees fall down in yeah. flames yeah. and it's like an obstacle for them to like, <laughs> yeah. outmaneuver. Um and they do uh what I'll probably say is like I don't think they could make that jump with no. that with they're, the vehicle that they're on. They're you, not if making. If you look that. the way they move, they're totally on a wire. Yeah, yeah. like because it glides. Yeah, they uh, jump this this scooter across like a little canyon. Yeah. yeah, and they they basically follow, and rightly so they don't make the jump. Yeah. But I don't know what they're in. They're in some like little remote control car. Yeah, it's car like a things. bunch of. Frank and th- buggies and skateboards and lawnmowers and the things that they've cobbled together. Yeah. I like how they all like. Hitler. 
like attach with each other. I forgot yeah. that they did yeah. that. It becomes a proper transformer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. do like a Voltron thing where they're like, okay, hook up. And yeah. they'll like yeah. merge into one vehicle. Yeah. Yeah, they splat into the side, it blows up, yeah. and they're like Alan, Alan staring intently. At the <laughs> yeah. like, uh, it just reminds him of the the, the good yeah. old days at school. Yeah. Um, Alan just stares for five minutes straight. <laughs> <laughs> but, but one unfortunately makes it out, yeah. and uh, Chip, Hazard. Chip Hazard makes the it out. Leader of the original. And he's now got a sweet kind of scar yeah. almost in the side of his face. Like, he's got like Terminator damage. Yeah, yeah. yeah you and can he, see like his, his the, like the eye just like is just proper robotic as it's almost yeah. half his face because it's almost off. like a little callback. Back to Arnold Schwarzenegger with yeah, like yeah, the yeah. kind of yeah. the half like that side of the face, you know. Mm. Mm. But uh, in the meantime, you have uh, Alan basically convincing the parents because they have no idea. <laughs> At this point, they don't know what the fuck is going on. They think he's completely insane. Yeah, they're all <laughs> looking at him. And I mean, he has done some dodgy stuff in the past, so you know, like let's let's give him a bit of leeway here. Um, at this point, also, um, Larry and, uh, who's the other guy? Erwin, mm. um, come along because, uh, Alan's called them up yeah, before like and voice got onto yeah. their support helpline, which was awful. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, like they, they basically all converge just at the right point and <laughs> they look out the window and there's just... There's like a legion of them. They're just coming out. And one of my favourite lines from Christie's dad is so simple. He's just like staring at He's like, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he just doesn't know what the fuck is going on. <laughs> and he uh, he goes outside to yeah, be he like... He tries to surrender. He tries like, to surrender and give them the Gorgonites because yeah. he's a selfish piece of shit. Yeah. There will be no surrender. Yeah. Um, no mercy. Yeah. He gets chased back inside by the flamethrower. And then it becomes like a siege movie. Oh, it just becomes the, a siege movie yeah, at this point. I love like the wackiness, but also the inventiveness of mm. all of this. Like all the all the rest of the stuff, like the nail guns, the the helicopters, the because yeah, fireballs that this, are like yeah, tennis balls. Let's start with the fire. fireballs because the first thing they start doing is they start like. <laughs> they basically put on if you want to be my lover mm-hmm. and then they start throwing fucking fireballs <laughs> through like the windows yeah. and uh, this is where Alan's mum who's a tennis player in nowhere like starts to shine yeah. because she's just like yeah. starts hitting them back and it's like on both sides there you know like <laughs> fireballs are coming in she's hitting some of them back they're like fucking hitting some of the uh, yeah. soldiers and then it's like a scene out of like on the front lawn. It's like a scene out of Saving Private Ryan. When yeah. Like, yeah. Back, like, just in slow motion. Yeah. yeah, we're like pulling soldiers out of the. Car like, and, I would have loved, and I, I, they missed a trick with this. Is that I would have loved if one of the small soldiers' toys had an arm off and was looking for his other arm. <laughs> yeah. That would have yeah. been, no, been, been funny. That this been was, cool, I think, yeah. before. Was this before Saving Private Ryan? Uh, might have been the same year, actually. Right. Oh, yeah, so yeah, around around then, but. There was like uh, some great moments, like the cat nearly gets hit mm. by one of the fireballs, and the mom's like, "That's fucking it." She fucking <laughs> destroys it, like the the yeah. next uh, racket swing. Yeah. Um. There is oh god. There's yeah. like they breach the back, um, with the you know like this makeshift bomb, um, yeah. as well, and then they start coming in from like the yeah. back. The it's like a massive battle yeah I, I can't describe everything but yeah there's the, so many cool little beats and so many cool little like fun yeah. set pieces and things yeah. so basically the, the nerdy guys have said that an EMP uh, will wipe these guys out so they're mm-hmm. trying to get to the top of a telegraph pole to like connect these two transformers to, to wipe them all out so do a yeah. small scale EMP so Alan gets ready he basically kits up then his dad shields him um, whilst Alan's going <laughs> up and uh, he gets hurt, he gets shot, uh, and then he's like, go, go. And then uh, this transport comes around, he's like, because he's seen all these yeah. gadgets at this point. He's There's like, a little, little tiny guy on this, the techie guy. Yeah, yeah. He, he, the best line of the Best line movie. of the film. Yeah. He's just like, what are you packing, tiny? The tech guy's like, packing? Packing you? <laughs> And he just shoots the net yeah. and it just wraps around him. It's like, that's him out of the equation. It's such a good line. I'm, I'm fucking so great. glad that you guys love that line because like, I, like, I've watched this film so many times and it's one of my yeah. favourites. I'm so, so glad you Back guys enjoyed you? that. So. <laughs> so Alan's climbing up this yeah. Um, telegraph, how, like, yeah, telegraph yeah. pole and Chip Hazard 
with the helicopter he has yeah. basically goes to finish off Alan before he can before he can do it. Archer gets up there via yeah. grappling hook. Yeah, and yeah. like he basically like they basically have a little standoff. Archer's not Archer doesn't really fight. Catch Archer's shit ass. in this fight. <laughs> Archer's, Archer doesn't ever fight <laughs> in the film. Yeah. Really. He, I he never fights. a single punch. Yeah. Um he he grapples. <laughs> but no to not well, much He gets grappled. <laughs> well, yeah. He, he tries going in. Happens, happens. And he basically gets... This is sparted off the end. Yeah. Uh, he gets kicked off. And at this point, Chip Hazard's just like, Victory is ours! Because he thinks that he's killed, he's killed the leader. And then Alan, in probably his best moment, yeah. he just goes, Have I got news for you? He just picks him up. He's like, You stupid toy! He just like shoves him yeah. into the fucking yeah. tower. He uses those to connect the Transformers. Yeah. Yeah. And then basically just fries Chip Hazard mm. for a couple of minutes straight. Mm. All of the toys are basically fried mm. apart from there's a there's a satellite that falls it's down in dish, yeah. in the uh helicopter explosion like uh that uh Chip Hazard was on before it like the satellite falls down and all of the toys are vaporized. So we basically cut to the yeah. aftermath of the CEO coming in in the helicopter with Such his secretary yeah. and uh, she basically has this machine that's that basically writes checks. just writes yeah. checks that's yeah. like and she just goes around just gives them to yeah. everyone that's they're all like getting in his face like do you have an idea what we've yeah, been yeah. through my house is destroyed this and that, <laughs> this and that. he's like and the, sh- the check showed and he's like and this is fine yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like in any other film bro you were saying that these would be the bad guys but they get away with it yeah yeah anyway the and Gorgonites miraculously survive yeah they're under the satellite the Alan basically gets makes their dream come true the ship that was in before he's repaired it yeah. and then he sails them away to, at the end into to find Gorgon yeah into yeah. into the wonderful land it and was, you know like National Park yeah, yeah exactly yeah, so, yeah. and it's just kind of like a very hopeful yeah. ending yeah. Um, and that is Small, small Soldiers, soldiers yeah. yeah final thoughts Gal? I think this film's incredible I've watched it so many times it's like what like one of my favourite films as a child still probably holds up to one of my favourite films of just all time you were ever. saying it, it's something you watch a lot at Christmas as well it right? is it's for some reason it's one of whenever the family gets together it's uh, Small Soldiers is mm. one of those films because mm. like we are all love it like my parents love it I love it my brothers and my sister love it I don't understand how people can't like this film i think it's perfect yeah uh the opposite of sky captain <laughs> <laughs> ruin uh i don't think it's perfect it has it sure. has some weaknesses but none of the weaknesses break the film at all i think like easily the strongest part is the toys you mm-hmm. see a lot of them and there's enough kind of quirky adult characters to, it's just almost constantly entertaining there's a few mm-hmm. times when it's trying to be sincere and where it's all focused on alan which i find very dull but you know in terms of the stuff that I'd want to skip its like tiny portion of the of the whole movie. If the film had gone on any longer than it did, maybe it could have started getting. I feel like maybe you could have cut like five minutes out. It it didn't outstay its welcome. No, no, it was it's it's a great it's a great solid film, Mm. and I think it still holds up today. Like Callum, I'm I'm glad that I'm glad that you do watch it at Christmas because it's it's a good film. I think Mm. I think I used to watch it quite a lot at Christmas because it was it happened to be on at Christmas. I remember I remember it was one of those movies which ended up being on TV quite a lot. The quintessential. Family yeah. film that's got everything. <laughs> Love, death, romance. <laughs> <laughs> and Brad. And Brad. And Brad. <laughs> Let us not forget Brad. No. And that was Small Soldiers. And our final film of the, the trilogy that we have here. Now, when you know... Is. A f- well, first of all, sorry. <laughs> sorry. I was, I was, our I was, final I was, film of the trilogy here and then just I didn't was, say anything. I was going to lead in. I was going to oh, lead okay, in. Yeah. Okay. So, um, well, okay. Well, first of all. No, now you've ruined my intro. Uh, film is... Kung Pao entered the fist. After a lifetime of training. Hmm. Hey, who's he? I don't know. The Chosen One has returned. If you truly are the Chosen One, then you must bear the sacred mark. <laughs> to deliver the people from the forces of darkness. <laughs> And to check out the hotties. Be not concerned of her shyness, for it will pass. There you go. 20th Century Fox invites you to feel the fury. 
Taste the passion. You are the chosen one. One day, all will be revealed to you. I'm, I'm sorry? And witness oh. the utter madness. Oh. Kung Pao, enter the fist. That has such awards as the Stinker's Bad Movie Award 2002. And it was nominated and also won the most painfully unfunny comedy of the very same year. By the Razzies, yeah. Yep, yeah, you know a film is good when it is written, starred, produced, and directed by the exact same man. Tommy Wiseau, Neil Breen, these titans of cinema are joined by Steve Odenkirk, or Odenkirk. Don't really know how to pronounce Odenkirk. it. Hey, it was lost. Thousands of years ago in translation. <laughs> okay, let me just stop you right now. <laughs> See the speech that you just did? Yeah. There's more fucking planning <laughs> in that than there is in the entire fucking film of Kung Pao. <laughs> what the fuck is up with you bringing this to the table? Right, first of all, right, isn't this supposed to be a podcast about good, unappreciated films? Well, this was guilty pleasure. Guilty pleasure? <laughs> Who the fuck is watching this? Callum, what the fuck is this? Did you get past the baby scene? <laughs> Like, okay, Rowan will so, literally tell you what happened. James start, James and I, like, just watched this. The whole time James was, like, looking at this thing, well, com- pretty much completely stoned face. There was, I think, one joke in the entire film. What? Right, which, okay. made, which made, which got this reaction out of James. <laughs> That's oh. the most, sort of, appreciative I think James was of the whole film. We'll get, we'll get to the bit that... <laughs> we'll get to the bit. So, so you know, James just put his hands yeah. in his face. So, but give us, yeah. So first set, of all, set, let's get some context. Can I just ask? <laughs> you need to get this out. Why? <laughs> just why? Why? Why, why, why? why did you bring this one? This is, in my opinion, and in the pe- opinion of others that I know and I've watched with, a really funny and the most quotable film I think I've ever watched. Right. <laughs> That you've okay. ever watched. Yeah, like, I'd say Step Brothers is like one of the most quotable films just ever. I've not seen that. You've never seen Step Brothers? No. Oh, okay. I've okay. never seen Step Brothers either. What? No. Okay, this is getting weird. <laughs> We're in some Twilight Zone. So, <laughs> yeah, I think Kung Pao has so many bits yeah. that are just quotable and so just. What's it about? Give us the, the so, context and the premise and what it's all about. Take 1976 Hong Kong martial arts film. Tiger and Crane Fists. And just fucking butcher it. (laughs) Then reimagine it to have the audio taken out, replaced, and Steve Oldkirk's face superimposed on the main character. Have the whole film redubbed, spliced into different Mm -hmm. segments, Mm -hmm. and then have a loose narrative of 110% comedy gold. (laughs) That's what it is. Now, the fir- I will say, I will say, I think what turned off people off this film is the first five minutes, you have a fist fight between a newborn baby and a martial arts master who is called Master Pain. And then, now that was, the first five minutes was quite jarring because of that. Yeah. Then the rest is absolutely just perfect comedy gold. I will say my sort of history with this is I saw this when I was like 10 or something at a friend's house and Uh I thought it was the funniest thing I'd ever seen in my life. And it still remains that way. Not so much anymore. (laughs) Not so much anymore. Uh, But even when I was younger, the opening thing with the baby, I didn't think was a very good gag. I thought it was the worst part of the film. The only bad part of the film. (laughs) Did you not even laugh? When, see, see when, see when there's a bit where Steve Oldkirk's character needs to buy like a bag of nuts, and then he's at the shop, and he well, like well, goes, you're, you're jumping around the narrative here. Let's go. I don't really think there's a way to go through this. The narrative. Is, so we'll go through this. So I really don't want to go through the narrative. <laughs> so basically, this master pain person uh, is looking Betty. for quote unquote the chosen one. Yeah. Who's you know he wastes like this baby's entire family and then gets the baby burns the house down but the baby escapes and grows up to be Steve Odekirk uh, after they roll the baby down the hill for about three minutes (laughs) in that hilarious (laughs) hilarious bit where you just see a baby doll roll down the hill who is the adult 
Steve, adult chosen one, and he basically goes on this quest to track down Master Pain. Master Pain, yeah. Uh, and have his revenge and Good. stop Master Pain's evil plot. Um, <laughs> I don't. I don't really like. I, I don't know what to talk about with this movie. Um, after after he's walking through the fields, doesn't he run? Doesn't he then run into the whole group? And there's the whole zoom in gag. So this was the one gag. This was ten minutes in after the opening thing with the baby yeah, beating people it. up. After the baby rolling down the hill. After him going through some other towns and fighting some other people. Honestly, right? Okay, let's just fucking get to the, the one gag. The, the one fucking gag. Ten minutes <laughs> into a comedy that film. That made James go like this. <laughs> yeah. It was, the most, it was basically when they do the Quentin Tarantino-esque dramatic zoom in. Because uh-huh. he meets these guys in the field and it goes, zooms into the bad guys, then zooms into him. And then it just goes completely overboard where it's like the doing point. a million zooms a second. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then that, back into him. that was funny. <laughs> yeah. That was the one gag that made James laugh. And I turned to Rowan afterwards and went, how how far through the movie are we? And we checked and it was 10 minutes in. It was, and actually, I, it was actually 10 minutes and 55 seconds in, so it was actually 11 minutes. So, like, I, I, at that point I knew that this was going to be the worst film I'd probably seen maybe in the last 10 years. Mm. One of the worst movies. Wow. And it's definitely the worst movie I've seen this year. Wow. Um, what a positive podcast you put out here. And, it, and it's it's. <laughs> fucking painful i would not want to watch that again if there's a choice between somebody plucking out each and every one of my <laughs> testicle hairs and watching that again i'm getting the fucking tweezer out damn right let's carry I, on yeah. i feel differently <laughs> it does it it, it it hits my kind of humour bone more often. I think it's so ridiculous. I don't think it has aged them. terribly well. And I not all the gags are I don't think all the gags are very good. But there's some parts of it which I think really like hit hit their stride where to me it kinda has the energy with uh, Steve Wodekirk like redubbing everyone's lines and, and like kind of taking scenes from an older movie and like putting them into a different context with different audio and a different sequence and things. It kind of has uh the same energy as like when you and your friends riff over a bad movie. And I feel like that's why it's very, very quotable. Because I feel like it's one of those things where th- these are the jokes you you and your friends would say when you were watching this movie. That, yeah, I, movie, you know? uh, on the way uh, on the way here, thinking about Kung Pao, I did think it has kind of the same energy as a scary movie. You no. know, as a scary movie mm-hmm. series, I think where it just I takes the piss. May, may some places. Here's where I feel like it it, it butts heads with itself and where blasphemy. I feel like. The weakest gags, funnily enough, are the ones that they put the most effort into in a weird way. Like the bit where when he's on his search for Master Pain, he comes across this cow, this kung fu fighting cow that like he fights in a field. And that for me is not very funny, especially because they do two Matrix jokes in the same scene. I know. Because this was around the time the Matrix, which dates it really, really horribly. So ahead of its time. (laughs) The way I feel about this movie is it feels like if I watched it when I was 10 years old, I'd find it hilarious. Mm. And that's to its detriment because Which, it's so juvenile and so very juvenile, unfunny yeah. at some points now <laughs> watching it as an adult and somebody trying so hard to make you laugh makes it even, even worse to watch. I fucking hated it. <laughs> For me, the strongest jokes are actually the more subtle ones. I feel like there was a far more clever route they could have taken some of this stuff down. And the weakest parts are when they've invented things like the fighting the cow. Are we just, are we scrapping the whole going through this story Apparently. since it doesn't I have, really have a story? I think it's too hard to go through. This yeah. is, Kung Pao is an experience. It's not a narrative. Okay, anybody who's what like who's listening to this right now, don't watch Kung Pao. No matter how much Rowan and Callum are talking about it, and like you know, there might be parts where they find things funny. But if this is your first time watching this and you're past puberty, then you're not gonna fucking find this funny. You might as well go uh, just just go on Netflix and watch the fucking ranch or something. That'll probably be more funny than this shit. Oh, please don't watch The Ranch. It'll probably be funnier than this shit, Rowan. It's you know not. what? I'll watch a fucking episode of The Ranch after this fucking thing, and I'll tell you if it's fucking better. The Ranch is worse because it's just boring. Mate, I, <laughs> I got one laugh in this fucking entire comedy film. It's rubbish. 
It's an absolute travesty of cinema. So, Sun must have been in his eyes. There's no way it could as have As I've seen been attempting to say like. in my kind of critical analysis of it, I'm like, this, the bits which made me laugh the most are when, because they're cobbling together footage from an actual movie yeah. and re, rejigging it to, to make it fit a new narrative. And I feel like just the jokes they get out of that are the funniest jokes. Because the one that made me laugh was um, when the bad guy is talking to this one character in a scene and he's in a black robe. <laughs> yeah. and uh, But obviously, for the angles they want for the story to tell, they have to take shots from a different scene. Mm. <laughs> but the character the bad guy's talking to in the other scene is wearing red instead of black. Yeah. So just between cuts, they just threw in a line where the bad guy goes, I am a great magician. Your clothes are red. Before it does the cut. Mm. That kind of joke, I think, is actually really clever. Oh, I you love know. it. I, love I feel it. like if they had mined more potential material out of that kind of thing, then I feel like they would have had a really kind of smart movie. But I also like the stupid stuff where, like, there's one scene where, like, because it's meant to be, like, a really bad dub over, mm. there's a scene where a dog barks at and then sits down and there's no sound and there's yeah. like a five second yeah. delay before you hear the bark. Yeah. They do, so gags I do like as well are, are, are out of the dub, that they get out of the dub. Oh, like, like uh, yeah, it's it, yeah. that's their strongest point. There's a yeah. great bit where there's just two people walking down like mm. a little, uh, just, just walking down holding like a stick or buckets or something yeah. and they're yeah, not yeah, saying, the there's no, yeah, there's no dialogue <laughs> at all and then someone's just talking, we are two ventriloquists. <laughs> 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 It's all that stupid yeah. stuff, but like it's yeah. stuff. I there's absolutely there's lots of lines there that do make me laugh because again, it's just dumb jokes you'd say with your friends. You yeah, there's a couple of times where it is it like you know like the red you know the, yeah. the, the, the magician turning him to red <laughs> and stuff. That is all right. If that wasn't a fine movie, mm. I would have laughed. But everything else bogged me down so much that and and I was in such depression watching this film and I was just thinking about how much time was left and it just kept going. And at one point I actually shouted to the screen, I can't even remember what the fucking gag was. was, No, it was when uh, the people kept dying. Yeah, but then they weren't really dead. They weren't really (laughs) dead. They were in like the the tall grass and I was just so frustrated with it at that point. Because they do the gag where he's like over his master's body and he goes, and then he goes, off and thinks he's dead but then later he comes back and he's like why'd you leave all I did was this That's th- that doesn't mean I'm that dead that does not you know? mean a person is dead <laughs> <laughs> and like they do it to three different characters and then James like I think halfway through when he was trying when he was going back to like his love interest James is literally shouted at the screen go on with the fucking movie <laughs> you were like end it was like something that just refused to die <laughs> that's what this film is to me so um, a story of attrition and then eventually it did peter out and then it was like, oh, in the sequel, in the sequel, <laughs> la, la, la. <laughs> Shut up. I'm so fucking glad there isn't a fucking sequel to this film. It's well. fucking trash. It's filth. Well. I never, I, if this fucking DVD of that was in the bathroom, I wouldn't even wipe my fucking ass with it, okay? Now, the pressure you're feeling right now, James, is like all that pressure you feel like a piece of fucking coal feels before it gets crushed and then becomes a diamond. Okay. What? <laughs> you are going to understand that this is a diamond of a film. Not right now, okay? Might might take some time. No. No, the Cal, awesome Cal, that Cal, is Cal, hit Cal, your head. I'm going to be in the cold, That's... cold ground before I ever feel like this is anything of worth to ever watch again. <laughs> in right? which I will place a solitary yeah. DVD case of Kung Pao over your grave. <laughs> I will literally hire lawyers to keep one <laughs> from my grave, so if you do, they do that, they will give you a lawsuit. I... I'm amazed that you didn't find <laughs> more of this funny. What is funny about this film, though? <laughs> like, you keep talking about gags and being like, oh, yeah, it's all right. It's all right to blow your nose out, you know, like, you know, when you're at, you know, it's it's like it's like <laughs> when you're at a computer and you're like, LOL, you know, back in 2009, but really all you fucking do is, <laughs> that's it. That's this fucking film. There's nothing that's funny about it. It's sad. It's boring. There's fucking... There's sketches that are way, like, just elongated for the sake of being elongated so that people find it, oh, you know what? It can actually be funny. For that split fucking second, they're like, oh, yeah. It's funny because you did it three fucking times instead of one. It's not funny. That's just repetitive. You know, there's actually comedians who actually do that and it's actually funny. But, no, not this guy. This guy's fucking trash. 
I'm so glad I watched this movie just to see the anger on James. <laughs> James is so angry right now that I can literally see like the vitriol in his head that's being like overtaken by other thoughts of how much he hates certain scenes of this movie. But every scene you bring up makes me laugh because I really enjoy the scene. <laughs> it's like as I said, I don't think like a lot of the gags that are, 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 are like too exaggerated just don't work for me but just like the little stuff like the, that they do with dubs and things and how, do, how they recontextualize scenes like there's a bit where they're working with footage of like this old master character and he's got some kind of illness I guess in the original movie where he keeps like coughing and choking and yeah. things and they recontextualize that by putting like a CG fly in the scene <laughs> while he's talking that keeps flying into his mouth and making him choke <laughs> twice which means, already what yeah. are the odds <laughs> yeah. And there's other things of like they find the bad guy uh, at one point at the standing at the top of a waterfall swinging a chain around his head, <laughs> and, like they recontextualize that as to, like that's all he does. <laughs> you know, he's like standing at the top of his wall, waterfall swinging a chain around his head, and the dub they give him is like ah, oh, it's swinging a chain, sorry, sorry. chain, chain. You know? One of my favorite scenes is when the old master has to fight Master Pain, mm. aka Betty, but they have like. Uh, was it Baby Got Back playing yeah. in the background and there's just this big <laughs> this big fat guy with like a tuxedo with the big stereo dancing yeah. away in the background absolutely love it as well yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't. I can't yeah. like. So, yeah, I I respect that you don't like it, but I can't. I can't comprehend. I have fond memories of it, and there are bits that I do that do make me chuckle, and uh, there are lines which I remember do quote. Uh, to myself, uh, yeah. to friends and things, sort of out of fondness for that. But I don't think it's a thing I'd watch it by choice. By choice, I, I feel like my sense of humor has evolved a bit further than it because I do think it is very, very juvenile. But Blasphemy. it does make me chuckle a little bit. It does make me laugh here and there, and like some lines do do hit me in the humor bone. And some some things I do think are quite clever here and there. Yeah, I mean, but, like I. I've never watched it myself, <laughs> like, alone. Like, I've always watched it with friends, and I think, like, as you said, like, there's a lot of fond memories of just watching it with friends, and it's so utterly batshit insane that there's so many just random things you can just quote out the air, and it's one of the reasons I absolutely <laughs> love it. I want another one. <laughs> Give me more, please. <laughs> it's trash, okay? <laughs> and I'm never going to watch it again. <laughs> I don't know what else to say to you guys, <laughs> honestly. It's so bad. That's amazing. Uh, it's, it's, it's definitely the worst film I've seen in this entire podcast so far. He must have felt I watching think... a comedy like that next to me in absolute know, silence. There was a bit where I was trying to hold in laughter because I feel like if I'm the only one laughing, it's going to be really weird. <laughs> okay, so a lot of the time, James... I've seen more expression from a stone like, <laughs> than James watching this movie. Like He just seems so utterly defeated and pissed off by it. I feel like this is absolutely the quintessential guilty pleasure because it is oh, yes. so reviled by so many. 13%. That, yeah, 13% on, on Rotten, Rotten Tomatoes. Tomatoes yeah. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> Rotten Tomatoes got it wrong because it's less than 13%. <laughs> I'll fucking testify to that. Yeah. If you're watching it for the first time and you're forced to watch it for a shitty fucking podcast <laughs> then it is because it's got, it's got this fucking filth on it right now okay um, yeah, then the fucking get, shut the fuck up okay <laughs> then get smashed get a fucking bottle of fucking Smirnoff or something down it and then maybe you might have a fucking great jolly old time because of how fucking fucked up you are but apart from that avoid this movie at all costs because it's literally fucking it's fucking aids in movie form all right so shit so that's a what five out of ten <laughs> four and a half no um, no right no. that's it that's all i need to say about it yeah, yeah. Uh, wow uh two two of the Worst films kind of nominations for this yeah. for this one show. Yours, I think, is baffling. Yeah. Sorry? So, yeah, so, so if we talk about like choosing what's best... Small Soldiers wins. Small Soldiers does win. Small Soldiers, yeah, I think we, all, we yeah. all agree on Small Soldiers, yeah. yeah. But if you can't choose your own, you'd obviously go with Sky Captain, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I mean... Yeah. It's yeah. close. You but... you calling Sky Captain one of the worst movies ever, oh, I don't understand. I could When you're it. bringing that <laughs> into the ring... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, me. You're like Sky Captain World tomorrow. Well, one of the top five worst movies I've ever seen. Yeah, definitely. watch Kung Pao instead. Kung Pao's up there in the top ten. <laughs> <laughs> 
Sky Captain, yeah, one of one of the worst for me. Kung Pao, one of the worst for James. And Small Soldiers is something that we can all enjoy. A beloved because classic. I almost want to watch Ooh. it again because it'll be a fucking palate cleanser <laughs> to what I just watched. Because <laughs> the way I see it, Sky Captain of the World Tomorrow, for me, is a guilty pleasure because I, I do, I kind of see where people come from where they're, where they're not too fond of it because the style is very bold and very kind of love it or hate it where it's going for a very specific niche thing Kung Pao a quintessential guilty Shit. pleasure because I not only do I understand your reaction Callum that you think it's the best movie ever but I also absolutely understand James's reaction about thinking it's not worth wiping his own shit on <laughs> <laughs> the duality of man yeah. is, but is that being spell. said small soldiers rather you sandpaper <laughs> <laughs> That being said, small soldiers. Fuck you, Cam. (laughs) (laughs) Small soldiers. (laughs) (laughs) Fucking shit. I'm trying to finish this in a wholesome way. Should we hug it out? Should we hug it out? I don't think he wants to come near you. Do you need need time? I think I need till next podcast (laughs) when we actually have wholesome movies. Small soldiers, (laughs) despite a bland kid character, is a really good. Flick. That's the one where if someone says they hate small soldiers, I don't get it. Yeah. yeah. That's the point I was making. You know, yeah, Sky can... Captain and Kung Pao, I understand oh, if people... <laughs> I understand if people Sky don't like Captain. that. Sky Captain. But small soldiers... I Kung, think Pao really over, Kung Pao over Sky Captain every time. No, no, oh, you, no way. Not. Absolutely no way. Sky, Sky Captain, Captain is kicks. like... We will I, fucking take I this I court. bleed when I watch that. I can't watch Sky Captain. <laughs> What else do we fucking <laughs> say? It's so fucking shit. <laughs> anybody, like, it's, it's, it's it's so fucking bad. Why would anybody fucking watch it? Callum, I think you should fucking open your eyes next time and actually fucking watch the. F- so yeah, these have been guilty pleasure movies. Yeah, yeah. I still love Sky Captain. But you should feel guilty for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, why and I love small movie? soldiers, which I feel much better hey. for. And I love small soldiers too. I mean, yeah. Yeah. Well, there you go. You got a, yeah. you got a good mix of both there. Yeah, yeah. So, what <laughs> can we uh, look forward to in the near future? Well, then? next time we're going yeah. on to uh, a bit more of a Christmassy mood. Christmassy mood. A bit exactly. more wholesome. A bit more. Everyone's on the level. Mm. We'll just enjoy it, and we'll bring out uh, Christmas movies that. We enjoy yeah. watching. So until next time, I've been Rowan J. Coleman. Yeah, I'll see you next time. I've been James. Um. <laughs> <laughs> He's been Callum. Callum, yes, well done. Yeah. I was going to say something about the baboons, but now. Don't, now <laughs> don't bring up the, the baboons again. I'm a baboon the, hunter. <laughs> I'm going to have nightmares of those baboons. <laughs> I'm right? going to have nightmares of fucking Sky Captain. <laughs> 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 just Polly complaining about her uh, shots. Just gonna be, I'll switch on the television and every channel will be Sky Captain. <laughs> <laughs> Only two shots. <laughs> yeah, Jesus. Two shots, two shots, yeah. two shots. Uh, yeah, well, uh, I've uh, been Callum. Thank you for listening. Have a good one. As always, live long and prosper. <laughs> <laughs>